Hi, welcome to this is domain of CCSK. This domain is focused on management plane and uh, business continuity. Very important domain. You can expect four questions in the exam from this domain. Cloud management plane. Uh, the management plane is the most significant security difference between uh, the traditional infrastructure and the cloud computing. We always had a management plane. Um, the tools, interfaces we use to manage our infrastructure, um, platforms and the applications. But the cloud abstract and centralize the administrative management of those resources. So cloud, uh, cloud management plane is responsible for controlling the data center with uh, the APIs and web consoles rather than the wires. That is the difference between the traditional uh, infrastructure and uh, the cloud uh, uh, computing. Gaining access to the uh, management plane is like gaining unfettered um, access to your data center because e the difference between the uh, traditional IT and um, the cloud computing is that you do not have uh, the data center, you do not have the physical access to the data center so the cloud management replaces the uh, access to uh, the data center. Um, you can configure, you can do different things with the, uh, with the cloud management uh, uh, plane. The cloud management plane is responsible for managing the assets of the um, resource pool. There are different responsibilities um, for managing the, uh, the management plane. Um, and these are very well splitted into the cloud provider as well as the cloud customer. So cloud provider um, remains responsible for ensuring the uh, management plane is secure and necessary uh, security features are exposed to the cloud customer. Um, also the provider is responsible for managing the access through web and REST while the customer remains responsible for um, how they configure those assets and those assets um, they deploy into the cloud. Also uh, the customer remains responsible for uh, properly configuring their usage of uh, the management plane. The business continuity and disaster recovery is just as important in the cloud computing as it is for any other technology. So the responsibilities and uh, the importance remains the same for business continuity and disaster recovery in the cloud as well. There are three main aspects of the BCDR in the uh, cloud. Um, ensuring the continuity and recovery within a given provider, uh, cloud provider. And these are the these are the tools and techniques to best architect your cloud deployment to keep things running. If uh, either uh, what you deploy breaks or a portion of the cloud provider uh, breaks, so this will ensure the continuity and recovery. Prepare for managing um, the cloud provider outage. This extends from the more constrained problem uh, that you can architect around within a provider to uh, the wider outages uh, that take down all or part of the provider uh, services in a way that exceeds the capabilities of the inherent um, disaster recovery controls. Uh, the portability it is um, it is uh, it is the option that we should always consider uh, for two reasons one if you have to migrate uh, somehow um, from one provider to another and um, in case um, you know from the business continuity aspects um, if uh, their data centers or, or something big has happened to the services for that particular provider and you you, uh, you have to migrate to the different cloud uh, provider to continue to continuity uh, with your business and to maintain and to you know um, to perform the disaster recovery uh, from that uh, cloud architect for failure so, the cloud platforms can be um, incredibly resi resilient. This is, um, of course, due to the inherently uh, greater uh, fragility of the virtualized resources. And uh, mostly applies to the compute, networking, and storage. 
since those allows closer to the raw access and uh, the cloud provider can leverage the additional resiliency techniques um, especially uh, in terms of uh, the IaaS uh, infrastructure as a services um, it is uh, you know uh, uh, the managing the uh, the business continuity and disaster recovery it is much easier and um, you know um, the higher possibility and ability uh, uh, in uh, infrastructure as a services and it is of course lesser in software as a services just like the security um, which is also uh, higher in uh, infrastructure as a service than uh, the software as a services also you can um, you can for example when you architect for failure you can uh, enable the different zones to deploy vms within the uh, auto scaled group um, that helps to achieve the high availability um, it is important to architect uh, to leverage these capabilities few points to remember for um, while designing the um, business con continuity and disaster recovery um, always we should consider the risk based approach uh, that is the key in terms of bcdr uh, not all assets needs the equal continuity so what should we do first is to perform the bia which is a business impact assessment uh, this is very important to understand the criticality of the assets don't drive um, yourself crazy by planning uh, for full provider outage just because of the perceived loss of control. Look at the historical performance maybe. Um, strive to design for RTO and RPO. Uh, this is required, uh, you know, this is uh, equivalent to those on the traditional infrastructure for example when you migrate from the traditional infra IT infrastructure to the cloud computing uh, infra uh, it is important to sustain those RTO and RPO uh, RTO and RPO are um, recovery time objective uh, which is uh, which says that uh, what is the maximum tolerance uh, time uh, that uh, the business can survive uh, while we recover the services recovery point objective recovery RPO is the recovery point objective it means that in case we lose some uh, backup or some some kind of data um, during the recovery so what is the most uh, recovery point for example you have um, one month of uh, data that you need to run the business but uh, uh, the business can be sustained without any uh, impact if even if we are able to uh, recover the data from past 15 days so that is the recovery point objective access to management plane uh, so there are two ways to access the management plane one is the web access uh, which is managed by the provider and uh, APIs uh, application programming interface which is a REST representational state transfer and uh, this is um, HTML based uh, and uh, authenticated request uh, for example th there are cryptographic ways where uh, these uh, um, for example OAuth uh, or uh, some kind of tokens like um, uh, to be signed uh, you know when um, the services are being accessed through the APIs so whenever the calling application is is trying to access the management plane using those APIs so uh, those applications will be provided with the kind of token and uh, whenever they send the request to the management plane they need to submit that token for proper authentication securing the management plane um, identity and access management um, it includes the identification authentication and authorization to determine who can do what within your uh, cloud platform or the provider um, account management uh, of course there has to be some kind of segregation uh, who can uh, have access who can have control of the super admin who can have access uh, of the service accounts and who should have uh, the admin accounts um, the least privilege should be the key um, uh, while granting the access 
multi uh, multi factor authentication should be enabled um, uh, for uh, for the secure management plane uh, while um, the external applications are trying to access uh, the management plane so baseline uh, the cloud management plane user account including the super administrators and the service administrators it is important to baseline uh, those um, uh, to understand uh, the, and to create the access control list securing a management plane when building the cloud uh, so very important topic here uh, when you are uh, building the uh, cloud it could be the private cloud could be public cloud but whenever you are uh, developing something from the scratch uh, starting from the parameter security um, it basically uh, protects from the attacks against the management plane um, such as web and apis uh, servers uh, it includes both lower level network defenses as well as the higher level defenses against the application attacks the customer authentication um, this provides the secure mechanisms for the customers to authenticate the management plane um, and uh, they should use the existing standards for example um, oath for uh, for uh, you know the signing uh, requests um, uh, whenever the api is being called those tokens the sign tokens should be used uh, and these are uh, cryptographically valid and uh, the documented for the customers and uh, customer authentication should support the multi-factor authentication uh, as an option or the requirement internal authentication and credential passing uh, the mechanism uh, your own employees uh, used to connect with the non customer facing portion of the management plane um, it also includes uh, you know any translation between the customers authentication and uh, any internal api request and uh, the provider should always mandate multi factor authentication for cloud management authentication authorization and uh, entitlement uh, this is uh, this is the entitlement uh, so in ccsk the entitlement is uh, the access control list acl uh, who can do what uh, so this granular entitlement um, basically it is better uh, enable the customer to securely manage their own users and administrators and internally uh, granular entitlement reduce the impact of administrators account being compromised or uh, the employee abuse logging monitoring and alerting um, important to log and monitor and uh, you know monitor those events that what is happening on the uh, management plane level business continuity and disaster recovery uh, so like security and compliances bcdr is a shared responsibility um, meta structure cloud configuration should be uh, backed up in the restorable format um, software defined infrastructure this allows you to create the template to um, to configure all aspects of the cloud deployment infrastructure re-architect your deployment lift and shift doesn't uh, enable to utilize the cloud features so when we say lift and shift it means don't just pick up the services as as it is from um, uh, from um, the uh, traditional infrastructure and uh, don't just put them as it is on the cloud because these are not going to give you uh, the the uh, leverage of the cloud features for example um, if you talk about the resilience or um, the the scalability and uh, you know elasticity etc application uh, apply structure it is when real time switching is it possible design your application to gracefully fail in case of the service outage this is it uh, for the domain for this domain um, let's take a look on some questions uh, the sample questions uh, how it look like uh, which interface does the cloud customer typically have with the management plane in an SaaS cloud model? So, do we have root level access uh, of the underlying hardware? Um, 
I don't think that cloud customer is going to have a root level access. An admin tab on the user panel. Um, yes, administrative access to the operating system uh, the um, app runs on. I don't think uh, the cloud customer will have the OS level access uh, on the uh, management plane. The physical access to the data center, of course not. So the right answer is um, B, an admin tab on the uh, user panel because customer typically has minimal interaction with the environment and often, uh, tab, you know, uh, admin or settings tab on uh, on the interfaces. Next is related to the web console. Uh, web console for accessing the uh, cloud management plane are managed by which of the following? Uh, of course, cloud customer is not going to manage the web console for uh, the cloud management plane. Regulator not, programmers not. So the right answer is the cloud provider A. Uh, which of the following cloud business continuity uh, and disaster recovery VCDR feature that is not easily accomplished in a traditional IT environment. Um, the regular backup we can do the in the traditional IT as well. Uh, deploying virtual machines across uh, the multiple distinct ge geographical available availability zones. Um, yes, this is this could be the answer. Um, versioning of uh, the baseline operating system builds. This is not. Uh, specific to uh, the cloud this can be done uh, in the traditional IT personal training this can be done in traditional IT so the best answer remains the B um, because it is difficult to build multiple traditional data centers in different geographic areas as physical property is very expensive if it is traditional IT so it is not possible uh, in traditional IT uh, environment What is probably the most significant barrier to implement um, cloud business continuity um, and disaster recovery architecture across the multiple geographic locations? Cost, legal provisions, loss of users, non-repeatability. Um, legal should not be the barrier. Loss of user should not be the barrier. Uh, non-repeatability should not be the barrier. So cost remains the most important aspect because replicating uh, cloud assets across the multiple geographic region is typically more expensive. Um, that includes hosting a cloud environment in a, you know, um, a location. With this, uh, I am done with the, the domain 6. And if you like the video, uh, I, uh, please uh, subscribe, like, comment and share. Thank you.